Today in our 2010 GMC Sierra 2500 series, we'll be doing a test for the Kurt cargo carrier. That's part number C18150. So I've already got it loaded up on the Sierra, just to give you a good idea of what it's gonna look like. Its dimensions are 20 by 60. It has a 500 pound weight capacity. And as you can see, it's a sizable carrier. We've got plenty of spots to tie down our cargo. It has a mesh floor, which makes it easy for dirt and debris to just fall right through. So that's, we, that's nice. The shank is a two inch by two inch. So it goes into a two inch by two inch receiver. It is angled upward to accommodate for that ground clearance in the back. The pin and clip is not included. So if you don't have one, you'll need to pick one up here at eTrailer.com, part number PC3. Let's go ahead and take a few measurements. So overall to the Sierra, we've added about 30 and a half inches. For our closest point, which whatever comes in contact with our Sierra first, about eight and a half inches away from here to here. Our ground clearance back here, we've got about 20 and a half inches. Let's go ahead and drop down our tailgate and see how much our tailgate covers. So as you can see, we get a full drop in our tailgate. It doesn't come in contact with the carrier. And it's only covering up about six inches of the carrier. And we've got about, about nine and a half inches underneath. So just keep that in mind when you're stacking things or loading things on your carrier. If you're wanting to lower down your tailgate, that stuff might get in the way. So one last thing on our Sierra, our exhaust exits on our passenger side. It is out to the right, roughly, so it's not going to come in contact with anything we might have in our carrier, so we don't have to worry about it. But with that being said, that's going to complete our test fit of the Kirk Cargo Carrier, part number C18150 on our 2010 GMC Sierra 2500 series. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side-to-side -side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or any even pavement. And last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.